Do you want to get more kills and die less in Apex? Well, good. Because in this video, I'm going to break down the eight most common reasons most players die way too much. Thanks to EA for sponsoring this video. Number one, you're fighting for far too long. This is something that everyone has experienced and more than just once, I'm sure. And I'll be honest, certain situations can be extremely tough to just speed up. But when you're fighting, you're naturally drawing attention. Bullets, explosions, abilities, all will be ringing out. And sometimes from several hundred meters away. Now, during all of this time, it's it's fair to assume another team is hearing this interaction and is on their way to try to get involved. If you can at least prep with this thought in mind when a fight is becoming prolonged, then you're already going to be ahead of a lot of the player base. You don't want to just be shooting because you can. You want to be shooting with intention, whether that's to level up your evo armor while you hold a solid position, or if it's to just get some initial damage so you're able to close the gap to your enemies and fight them up close. Now everything should be a part of your greater plan. And I do believe fights to go on too long because of another reason but I'll get into that in a moment. A good rule of thumb you want to live by is this 20 second rule. If your fight is going on beyond 20 seconds, it's time to either go into fourth gear and try to wrap the fight up while being mindful of any incoming third parties, or you can start to back up and try to find better positioning so that you can pause this fight, but from a safe spot and be mindful of a third party coming in. This way you can take a lot of the attention that was on you and shift it onto a new team that may be approaching. Now, this will be especially helpful in the ranked mode Mode where more teams are just generally alive for longer periods of time and a lot more players are hyper aware of a third party opportunity. Number two, poor positioning. Now this one will put you in a disadvantaged spot even when you don't mean to. At times while we're traversing the map, we can all suffer from bad positioning. It's not always going to be your fault, but what you want to try to learn from that is that when you're in an area that you're familiar with and you know is not favorable to you or even your teammates, especially if your enemy was to attack you, then you want to be able to find the quickest spot to reposition yourself so that you're not so vulnerable. Now, common features like high ground, large amount of cover, a building with minimal entry and exit points are all generally great areas for good positioning. But the best tip I can give you is always try to move in between different pieces of cover, even if you aren't actively engaging with an enemy. We know this is a game of seconds, so in the event you do get ambushed or in the event you're pushing a known enemy but they don't necessarily know where you are pushing from or your whole team is pushing from, you always want to be near some form of cover because it's definitely going to help you out. In theory, you'll be taking less damage and you'll have better positioning over your opponent. Now, cover isn't a novel idea in any FPS shooter, but players don't always tend to gravitate towards it unless they're really experienced in looking for it. So although this may seem fairly basic, you'd be surprised how many times our minds will just have us drift off because maybe we're not being mindful about our surroundings and we find ourselves in a worse spot and our opponents in a better spot and this makes us much more susceptible to dying to them. Number three, you're not shield swapping or certainly not enough. This is one of the fundamental skills in Apex and as you continue to progress through the game it becomes more vital to do but it's also a true skill gap. I'm sure most of you know about this mechanic by now but you're just underutilizing it when it comes down to it in game. Whether it's that white armor on the ground that you can quickly swap to in the heat of a fight or it's remembering that you wiped a squad 10 meters from you and there's still a blue armor armor swap in one of the boxes that you can get to quickly. It's all important to remember and execute. Armor swapping can be practiced in the firing range now, whereas before we just had to get better at it in game, which is where I recommend you to practice it the most. And if you're on mouse and keyboard, make sure you're utilizing moving around, jumping and or crouching while you're in the death box grabbing that swap. For all my controller players, I recommend getting used to grabbing armor swaps quickly first and then incorporating a jump while you're going into the box so that you're not just a sitting duck in the box when you're going for that swap. Controller players can't really move around in a death box, certainly not like most keyboard players can. And yes, I do know about a couple little tactics that allow for some slight movement, but I've found the jump interact into the box is the most consistent way to get the swap and utilize some form of movement. Now lastly, you must begin to be aware of what boxes your teammates have already swapped as well. Countless times I'll see players neglect to pay attention to what box their teammate just swapped as they're running to that box while cracked only to be shocked that that 
armor swap is gone. That usually results in them dying as well. In most cases, you'll be able to tell which boxes your teammates already swapped if you just pay attention to their armor levels and what death boxes are where. Number four, healing. Now healing is the cornerstone of thriving in this game. If you overheal in certain moments where just team firing that enemy would result in them dying sooner and your teammates staying alive, then you could be making a grave mistake. On the contrary, and what is far more common for players is not healing soon enough and in safe spots. Now, I don't care how basic this sounds. It's something that I see at all levels in coaching Apex. And for you more experienced players, I guarantee you it's probably about balancing when to heal when you're in a clutch up moment, like trying to complete a 1v3 or a 1v2. I see good players in these scenarios miscalculate constantly when they should heal or not healing at all. But first off, you got to make sure you have enough shields and health whenever possible. Ideal amounts are two to four shield batteries, more is always better, eight to 12 shield cells, four syringes, and two med kits. Now these are just ideals, it's not set in stone, but if you can shoot for that, you should be chilling. Remember, your backpack size, what you can find, if you'll be taking more zone damage, are all important variables when calculating what the amount of shield and health you need to carry is. But let's talk in some simple terms. If you take more damage than you deal and you have the time and space to heal, use it. If you downed one player and took 100 damage and your armor is now cracked, but you know you're going to have to fight one more player who is presumed to be full health and shields, you're going to have little chance in winning that if you aren't able to heal or reset with an armor swap. This is as simple as I can make it, guys. Health and shields is all just a numbers game, but it's crucial you pay attention to this at every single moment during the game. Because trust me, every good player you watch does this and does it well. Number five, incorrect ability usage, or just flat out using the wrong legend for your playstyle. Using abilities incorrectly, whether that's at the wrong time, wrong place, or forgetting to use them all together because you've been maining a different legend and forgot what your current legend does. I mean, all of these things can and will affect how your fights play out. The longer that Apex has been around, the more abilities have continued to play a significant role in fights. Now, once you understand the concepts of what your legend can do, it's going to be time to take in where and how they really thrive. At the end of the day, this is probably what draws so many people to keep coming over to Apex and getting into the game. Another angle to look at this from, though, that is super important is understanding what your enemy is capable of with their legend's abilities. This helps you make split second predictions or reads on what you believe their next move will be. If you're forgetting to use your abilities, it may be time to hone in on one or two legends to focus on. I know a lot of you probably have a main legend, but if you're one of the players who doesn't or you feel like your main just isn't cutting it, it's best you get to mastering just one or two of the legends. This way you can learn the different ways to outplay and outmaneuver your opponents. And constantly switching your legend could be screwing up your ability to have a deep understanding of what's at play in this game. Number six, and this one is super important, overextending and getting focus fired. You guys love to talk about this one all the time in my comments section, and it's the main thing you're going to want to watch out for if you're going to take anything away from this video. Simply put, more gunfire on you speeds up how quickly you'll die in this game. If you're not mindful of overextending, you will be getting clipped up fast. I'm sure you've had a lot of sweaty matches this season and died to a very coordinated team. This will feel very frustrating because it's going to feel like you didn't even have a chance or at least a fair one at that. But listen, the same thing is true on the flip side. Team firing with your squad mates is going to make your life easier and help you get more kills. But back to overextending. One thing that helped me correct this bad habit was being extremely mindful of where my teammates were at at all times, especially in accordance to where I believe or know my enemies to be. This way I can rarely overextend and be surprised by it. Now I'll admit, if you're solo queuing, this isn't always going to be easy. Predicting what your random may or may not do is a tricky thing to manage. However, if you're able to apply all of these things that I've gone over into your gameplay and you're being mindful about your positioning, well I guarantee you, you'll find yourself overextending less and less. No one really tries to overextend for a kill unless they're being extremely greedy and like ego challenging a fight. This really starts from just not paying attention a ton or not making the right read on the situation. But if you truly practice being mindful of all of these things, well, the game will be yours for the taking. Trust me. Number seven is players giving up. A lot of players tend to give up when their teammates go down. It's like they almost know their fate is determined already or something. And that could look like just running in blindly into a building where you don't really know what's going on and you're trying to be helpful. Or it could just mean forgetting all of the principles in the game that you've worked hard on, like positioning, timing of your abilities, inventory management, and much more. Personally, for me, I think the best feeling in this game is clutching up a fight, especially when you have to like 
1v3 or something like that. And you're not going to experience that, or at least often, if you tend to give up. Now, I know some situations, the fight will just be flat out unwinnable. And I get that. But that's certainly not going to be every time. And remember, you're playing against other people who want similar things as you do. So you can't just rest on your laurels. You got to try to take it from them. And number eight is very similar to number seven, but it differs just slightly. And I'm calling it hero ball. What is this? Well, it's when you're trying to be too good of a teammate, but at the expense of truly taking care of the moment. As a result, you're going to throw your game. While this is similar to number seven, I swear people always gravitate to this at one time or another, at least until they truly learn how to process the different steps in Apex. You have to be disciplined and mentally acute when it comes to clutching fights. I mean, you don't even need the best gun skill or movement. You need to outwit your enemy. There's several different examples I could list, but just imagine both your teammates go down and they're inside a building or something where you can't see all of the enemies. You are blindly running in there because you want to be next to your teammates because you feel like you kind of missed out on some action and you get clipped by all three players team firing you. This is the epitome of playing hero ball. You want to be helpful. It's not like you're actually giving up. It's that you're not actually thinking about the situation at play. Another example is you could be in the process of trying to clutch a fight and let's say it's down to the last guy and instead of just abusing the high ground that you have over them, you rush off of high ground and you try to speed up the fight and in doing so, you kind of give away your leverage in that fight. This is another example of playing hero ball. What it boils down to is just not thinking enough about the situation. You're rushing it because you want the outcome and you want to try to be that good teammate. For newer players, this could look like going to revive your down teammate even when you know it's a bad time to do so like newer players love to go for a revive when they know they're just like i wasn't at the fight i've got to try to be helpful here and while i'm reviving i'm getting shot in the back there's so many different examples that could fall under this category but what it all boils down to is just trying to take in the information build up your skills and not throw them all away in the heat of the moment because in the heat of the moment is where you're going to need to apply all of these skills otherwise the player on the other end of the fight is going to use that against you and take you out. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn all about the best and worst legends currently, well, I suggest you check out this video next. Thanks for watching. Peace.